The House Energy and Commerce Committee is sending a bill to the full House dealing with global warming. That committee spent the week going through and making changes to the legislation. The committee vote, 33 to 25. Energy and Commerce is one of several committees that have input into the legislation. Well, After the vote, committee leaders talked with reporters for about, about 20 minutes. Today in the committee for our energy legislation, the margin was a good one. The support was bipartisan. And uh, the bill now goes to some other committees that will have a chance to review them. And uh, I think that many of these other committees will make improvements. We uh, are going to be talking to the ver different committees, especially to the Ways and Means Committee, because they can do things in that committee because of their jurisdiction that we were unable to do in this legislation because of the limits of, our, uh, of, of the jurisdiction that we have uh, control over. Uh, I think this legislation is very, very important, maybe one of the most important bills that Congress will pass this year, along with health care, because it will move us to a, 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 a greater independence as a nation to control our destiny in terms of our national security. It's going to create millions of new jobs as we transform our economy. And it's going to put a limit on the amount of carbon pollution that will continue to be, de de continue to be decreased uh, so that we can protect the environment and protect uh, the harm that's being done because of carbon emissions and other greenhouse gases uh, to our planet. And I think that, uh, for me, I was uh, very uh, blessed with the uh, fact that I had two subcommittee chairman with a great deal of knowledge in this area. Rick Boucher, who was the energy subcommittee chairman who did a great deal of work in the last Congress on this whole effort and who played an invaluable role in helping us reach the compromises we needed. But also, and, more, and the most important, was the role of Ed Markey. He has been the chairman of the select committee, one of the great environmental leaders in this country today, and he uh, uh, held the hearings and uh, helped to produce the compromises and develop the legislation that I'm proud that the uh, committee has passed today. I want to thank, thank you. you thank you, Henry, so much. Um, when uh, Henry and I began discussing this uh, at the very beginning of the year, um, all of the experts said that this could not be done. And uh, the reason that we were able to do it is that the people don't trust the experts anymore. Uh, the overwhelming sentiment out in the country uh, is that they want to see real change in the way in which uh, we generate the energy in our country. Uh, that was reflected in the course of the last several months uh, as the hearings unfolded and the members were exposed to the incredible uh, interest that the American people have in seeing this issue resolved in a way that creates millions of new jobs, backs out the oil that we import from the Middle East, and reduces dramatically the greenhouse gases that we emit into the atmosphere. And that's what you saw here today. You just saw the result of a discussion that took place um, under the leadership of Henry Waxman, uh, ensuring that every member was heard Every single uh, concern uh, was given respectful attention. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, that kind of door-to-door -door campaigning uh, was what resulted in what we see here today as this historic product. And I don't think it's too um, much of an exaggeration to say that this is a turning point in the history of the relationship between the United States and energy sources, and as a result, because Copenhagen looms in the fall, the world's relationship uh, with energy, because we will be the leader. So uh, it's been my honor to uh, partner with Henry, who have sat up there next to each other for 33 years. Uh, and, uh, and this is a day we've waited a long time for uh, on a very important, critical issue. Any questions?
Mr. Chairman, and uh, uh, there's been some criticism from some that this legislation it was designed so that the United States could have a leg up on Copenhagen compared to how it was done with Kyoto some years ago that Kyoto was sort of dictating. Can you speak to that and, and if this is passed through, the idea that the United States will have passed a piece of legislation going into Copenhagen, ver Copenhagen versus uh, being the other way around? President Obama has made it clear that he wants to go to Copenhagen as the leader and not the laggard, which we have been over the last eight years. Uh, we are working hard in order to make that possible. And today was the first major step towards accomplishing that goal. The world two years ago booed the United States in Bali. Uh, I think that they really do want us to arrive. Uh, that is the President of the United States uh, as the leader uh, that will give the guidance to the whole planet. About the Ways and Means Committee, Mr. Chairman, and what you'd like to see there. The Ways and Means Committee, I hope and, uh, and expect, will want to make sure that we uh, direct uh, uh, the revenues, some of the revenues raised through the uh, uh, program of limit limiting carbon emissions to uh, low income and middle income people uh, uh, to uh, buffer some of the costs that may. Uh, be put in their direction, and I think that that uh, will be an important contribution. Uh, both of us have asked to go to the to meet with the Ways and Means members, and uh, we had a, a one meeting with the Ways and Means Democratic Caucus uh, a while ago, and we promised to return after this bill passed our committee. So I'm looking forward to that. I do before I even ask you for another question. I do want to mention two people. Uh, without whom this legislation wouldn't have been possible. First of all, the President of the United States, President Obama, campaigned on the idea that we needed to do something in our energy policy. policy. He set forth three major objectives, health care reform, energy, and educational policies. Uh, our committee has two of the three. We have successfully passed out the first of the two in our jurisdiction. And the second individual leader is Speaker Nancy Pelosi. She has uh, placed this a, as a high priority for her leadership. She and Mr. Markey guided through an energy bill in uh, the last Congress. Uh, we got as much as we could by way of improvements in energy policy, recognizing that we had to get uh, President Bush to sign the bill. Now that we have President Obama asking for legislation, I think this Congress is going to respond because not only are our leaders demanding it, but the American people uh, are insisting upon it as well. Do you have any uh, discussions with your uh, Senate colleagues, uh, particularly the, the ones who expressed concern uh, in the yes. previous vote last year? And uh, yes, I, what's your reception? I, I've had a, a, a number of conversations with individual members of the Senate. Uh, some of whom supported legislation along these lines and some of whom were uh, very much against them when the issue was presented before the Senate. And I said to them what I've said over and over again, the only way we're going to get this kind of legislation passed is to develop a consensus that includes support from the business community as well as the environmentalists. The business community has worked hard on this issue especially those who have been part of the U.S. Climate Action Partnership. Uh, they've met for over two and a half years with the environmentalists in developing their approach upon which we modeled our legislation. Uh, the, the, um, uh, the, the senators, I think, will feel a great deal more comfort in the, in the recognition that this legislation has the support it has up to this point. And I believe as we move to the House floor, we're going to gain in support. It, it was very much like the uh, situation we faced when we were doing the Clean Air Act. Uh, we had a, a, a huge battle uh, uh, to, to get together the uh, legislation to pass the House floor on clean air. But as we worked through the various issues, we got support from more and more groups to the point where uh, when they recognize that there's going to be a law and they recognize there are going to be advantages for them and, and for everyone in the law, 
then we can get issues resolved and expand the support uh, for the efforts that uh, President Obama and Speaker Pelosi have been urging us to take. On that subject, can you say, does the allocation scheme need to remain exactly the way it is now onto the floor, or can it be looked at again in the Ways and Means Committee and elsewhere? Well, we're going we're to be open to looking at uh, improvements in the bill. Democrats who voted against the bill in committee of four, I think that you didn't, couldn't keep. We lost four Democrats. We picked up one Republican, uh, and um, I understood the, uh, the the concerns of those who felt they had to vote against the bill. The primary concerns they had was the reaction back home. Many of their constituents have not uh, thought through and heard uh, uh, what was in this legislation and and the and the benefits that are going to come to our country. They've been inundated by uh, negative statements about the costs, and the exaggerated costs of legislation. It's very much uh, the, the same situation we face with the acid rain bill, which is also a cap and trade bill, when the industry told us the costs were going to be extraordinarily high. And we said, let's put a cap and trade policy in place, figure out the most cost-effective ways of achieving the results, and it came to a tenth of the projected costs in reality uh, to achieve the reductions that we were able to achieve. Yeah, we, we, we know how difficult it is for some Democrats to vote for this bill at this time, but I think we should also take note of the fact that Mary Bono did vote for the bill, and we believe that there is uh, some substantial support out on the House floor, on the Republican side of the aisle, waiting for this bill. So I think that that is also a true about what we saw here uh, today. And we saw the same thing back in 2007 on that energy bill that people thought was um, uh, too far, too advanced uh, for its time. But by the time we were voting for it uh, on the House floor, uh, just as Speaker Pelosi had predicted, when the members actually have to vote for things on the House floor, they, Congress is a stimulus response institution, and there's nothing more stimulating than millions of Americans that want a change in our relationship with uh, energy and environment issues. And I think we're seeing the beginning of it here, and I think that there's uh, more of it on the way. Let, let me just make another point, and maybe I'll answer a question that some of you may have. But this is, should not be a partisan issue. Our national security protection, our energy independence, our creating new jobs and reducing the harm uh, to our environment because of carbon emissions, that shouldn't be partisan. And I wish the Republicans would have engaged with us in developing the legislation. It was difficult for them to do so. And uh, uh, because as some of the leaders in the, on the Republican side simply said to us, we don't believe in science of global warming, that there's any problem of global warming, and therefore we don't see what the problem, what, if we don't see the problem, we don't see why we need a solution. But that wasn't reflective of all the Republicans, and uh, I think many of them were just taken aback to see the industry groups to whom they ordinarily respond support the legislation to see the bipartisan group of governors calling for legislation embodying these principles. They were so taken aback by it that at one point in the markup, they were accusing us of being the party of big business. They were telling us we didn't care about the working people. Uh, I, I, I was amused at the fact that they had nothing better to say than to try to flip things around and, and to, and to uh, make those partisan kinds of attacks. We want to engage the Republicans. This bill should be bipartisan. And as we move forward, I, 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 I mentioned that as a very clear invitation. Ed Murray and I even went to the Republican conference of the committee. They call it conference instead of a caucus. To outline them, for them what we were trying to achieve. And um, uh, most members didn't believe we could ever accomplish what we set out to accomplish. And most members were reluctant for one reason or another to engage with us in developing the legislation. Now that it's moving forward, 
uh, we still want to work with them. Yep. Henry and I sat in these two seats yeah. for two hours just with the Republican members there taking questions from them after we released the staff draft. So we've tried very hard right from the very beginning to engage them. And, uh, and even as Henry is pointing out all the business support that we have, we also have the United Steel Workers, the United Auto Workers. We have a business labor coalition that has been put together along with the NRDC, along with uh, other major environmental groups. So uh, there is a new era here. And, uh, and, uh, and I think as this debate unfolds, we, we're going to move through this, those three phases of politics, political education, political activation, political implementation. And I think a lot of what has been happening is this pol in this political education phase is people are learning about all the recombinant political DNA that has gone on uh, and that it is a new era uh, and that there are new partnerships possible uh, to pass legislation of this magnitude. When you do get yes. to the floor, are there provisions of the bill that, that you have in it that made it possible for it to clear this committee, but that you would like to, to strengthen, such as the RES um, or the caps on the carbon. Would you want to see amendments to do that when it it's gets to early. the House floor? It's too early. We're just savoring uh, the victory. And uh, right now, I love every provision in that bill. <laughs> But uh, I don't love it so much that I wouldn't want to hear what other people have to say about it and learn more and, uh, and examine uh, alternatives that might even be better. Yes. Could you help us understand a little bit what you expect Ways and Means to do to this bill? It has 15 percent of the allowances for low and moderate income people. It also has uh, what state utility commissioners view is very stringent uh, instructions to them and the LDCs aimed at ensuring that the allowance values are passed through via the LDCs to all consumers, including low income and moderates. What kind of changes do you expect the Ways and Means Committee to consider, and how will you? deal with those? The uh, electricity part of this legislation uh, was uh, handled in a way that made sure that the money that will be allocated to the utilities will be used exclusively for the protection of those who are buying electricity. I think that uh, was a, a, a good accomplishment. And we handled it in the best way because we took into consideration regional differences. Uh, when we talk about other areas like automobiles, which are an enormous source of pollution, uh, we can't uh, ask the uh, uh, oil companies uh, to not pass on uh, the uh, cost to reduce carbon. They uh, have, are not regulated, and if we gave them allocations for that purpose, it would be a windfall. So that didn't make a lot of sense. What we needed to do is if there are increases in the cost to consumers in the transportation side of things, we need the tax committee to figure out a way to refund money to help people manage those costs, most likely through the tax system, most likely through some mechanism that they can handle, but we don't have the jurisdiction to deal with. And Charlie Rangel is a superb leader. And, uh, and, I, and Henry and I met for an hour and a half uh, with the Ways and Means Committee members, too, uh, so that we could begin the process of coordinating with them in this common effort. Yes. How many uh, other House committees do you expect to review the bill? No. I, th I think there's uh, issues with the Foreign Affairs Committee, Ways and Means Committee. You're saying eight different committees, so Agriculture Committee. I don't know them all. A lot of other committees will look at this. It cut, cuts across a lot of uh, committee jurisdictions. And that's the way the legislative process works. One more. In terms of the schedule for this year, to be, for the president to be a leader, not a laggard, do you, does he need to have the bill enacted by the end of the year? Do you want it enacted? Or is it sufficient simply to have House passage? I, I, he has said to us when we met with the president at the White House that 
he invited the Democratic members of our committee uh, to, to speak about this issue. He wants legislation this year. We want legislation this year enacted into law this year. We're going to, we're going to work to that goal, and, uh, and we're going to do all we can to see it happen. In the spirit of letting you savor the, the victory, uh, before we look at the hard road ahead, could you talk about holding the Democrats together on the uh, Republican message amendments, the gotcha amendments, both the off-ramps and the, and the, I guess it was the Gingrey amendment, the last one last night, the 100 percent auction, which only got four votes total, which I thought was interesting. What, what do you want to ask uh, about? The, 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 the process of holding the Democrats together on those, you, you, you had very few defections on it. Well, I think the Democrats realize those, mes those amendments were uh, attempts to send a message. Uh, they weren't uh, real, act, uh, real substantive amendments to deal with problems. It was simply to say, if you have these problems, shouldn't you deal with it? Well, I, I, there's, as I said over and over again in the debate, uh, making the act in, uh, ineffective or, or making it unworkable is not a solution to problems that come up. It, it, it may be, but it's certainly not the best one or the only one. Uh, and they weren't really looking for solutions to problems that might come up. They were trying to scare people about problems. But and, you make it yeah. sound easy. Did you have to talk any members back from voting for any no, of them? No, the, the uh, Democrats in tough districts who were actually voting in the favor of the, the underlying Dem bill. The Democrats understood that we were protecting the consumers as Henry said, in terms of their electricity rates. They understood that we were protecting steel and aluminum and cement and paper and other trade-exposed industries. And, and I think this is most importantly, they believe that we are going to unleash a new green jobs revolution that won't lead to 15 percent unemployment, which is what one of these amendments uh, had as their premise last night, uh, but that we're going ahead in just the opposite direction. And so I think most of our members actually believe that the premise was just completely false, uh, that we're heading uh, towards a cliff rather than heading back towards the prosperity which we've lost over the last eight years. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. You want to go into There's still time to get your copy of C-SPAN's 2009 Congressional Directory with information on House and Senate members, the Cabinet, 